In this lesson, we are going to do some really awesome calculations involving limiting reactant and pH. I would like to quickly show you three different scenarios, and I want you to carefully think about this, because if you can understand what I'm about to say, then acids and bases all of a sudden becomes very easy, or a lot easier than what it might be at the moment. So let's start with situation one. Okay, and we're going to do three different situations. So let me just make some space here. This would be situation two and situation three. Now let's say we have a container. So let's build a container. And in this one, now we are going to put some acid into this container. So let's pour, let's say we pour a small amount of acid and we put a lot of base. Now we know that an acid can react with a base to form products. But now if you add a little bit of acid and you add a lot of base, can you agree with me that the acid will be the limiting reactant? So when the acid is finished, there will still be a little bit of base floating around. So let's say here, there will be excess base. Now think to yourself carefully, what would that excess base do? Remember that there's always going to be a little bit of water present. So what will that excess base do if it's left in the water after the reaction has taken place? Because after the reaction has taken place, your container is going to look like this. All of the acid has been removed, and there will only be a whole lot of base left over. Now let's say, for example, that that base is NaOH. Then we know that that NaOH in water will dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. Now, what you would then do is you could use this formula. And then, because you have OH, you could then calculate the H3O, and then you could calculate the pH. Now, would you expect the pH to be 7, smaller than 7, which means it's more acidic, or would it be larger than 7, which is more base? It should be larger than 7. pH will be larger than 7, which is more basic, because there's more base. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you need to pause right now and re-watch that part of the video, because otherwise situation 2 and 3 will not make any sense. Situation 2. Let's say we add a lot of acid, small amounts of base. Now, we know that these two will react with each other. That is what acids and bases do. They react with each other. They destroy each other, or they neutralize each other. And that'll give us products. So can you agree with me that there's probably going to be excess acid over here? Because the base is going to run out first. So let's say here that the base will be limiting. Here I should have said that the acid is limiting. So therefore, there will be excess acid. Now, that acid, so, so, oh, let me just quickly show you. So all of a sudden, the container would look more like this. Sorry, I'm trying to squeeze it in here, but obviously the size of the container would still be the same. So it would just be acid. Now, let's say, for example, that that acid is HCl. Now, we know that HCl will react with the water. It will ionize into H3O plus plus Cl minus. You could then calculate this H3O plus concentration, and then you could calculate the pH, because that's equal to the log negative log of H3O concentration. And because there's more acid, we would expect the pH will be less than 7, because acids have a low pH. So let's say in brackets here, acidic. And then lastly, the easiest one, situation three. We will add perfect amounts 
So we will add just the right amount of acid, just the right amount of base, pretend that those are exactly the same, maybe like that. And then we can say that you'll have acid plus base giving you products. But now there will be no limiting reactant or there will be no excess. There will be no excess. Did you know that this would actually be a titration if you add just the right amount? That is how a titration works. You add just the right amount and so your pH will actually be equal to 7. So there will be no excess. So there will be no extra reactions taking place. All of the acid and base is neutralized. All acid and base is neutralized. There we go guys, so that's not the end of this video, that's just the introduction. But if you don't understand that, then you're gonna have a bit of a problem. So maybe watch this a few times until you understand this part over here, okay? So promise me that, please. So now, if you do understand that, let's move on to the calculations. So here we have a situation where we've got HCl being reacted with MgOH2. So step one is to write out the balanced equation. So HCl plus magnesium hydroxide, we know that that is an acid and a metal hydroxide, which would always give us a salt. And let's quickly pause right here. Why did I put a two there? Because the reason I did that is Mg is positive 2 on the valency or on the periodic table, and Cl is negative 1. So it's important that you get that, otherwise the reaction will never, ever balance. So if you're watching this right now because you couldn't get it to balance, that's the reason. And then lastly, the water. And then make sure that it's balanced. So we're going to put a 2 over here and then you would need to put a two over there. That is very important that you've balanced everything. Now what we need to do is we need to try work out the limiting reactant. Which one is limiting? Because then we can try to see how much excess of the other one will there be. So we are given a volume and a concentration of HCl. So we can work out using this formula, we can work out the moles of HCl by saying concentration multiplied by volume, so that would be 0 0.5 multiplied by 3, which is going to be 1.5 moles. Then we could also work out the moles of MgOH2, which will be 6 multiplied by 0 0.4, and that's going to give us 2.4 moles. Now, a lot of you might look at this and be, oh, look, the HCl is limiting because it's less. But you need to take the ratios into account as well. Now, there are many ways that students like to do limiting reactant. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that right now. But using whatever method that you like to use, you should find out that HCl is the limiting reactant. So therefore, all HCl will be removed or reacted. And so what will be left over? There will be excess N, sorry, MgOH2 in the container. Aha, now we need to try work out how much MgOH2, how much excess MgOH2, that's what we're going to try calculate now. So we know that all of the HCl is reacted, so we know that 1.5 moles of HCl reacted. Now what you do is you look at the balanced equation. So the, the ratio is 2 to 1. So we can say HCl to MgOH2 is in the ratio of 2 to 1. So if we used 
moles of HCl, then if you divide by 2, you should find out that 0 0.75 moles of MgOH2 was used. So 0 0.75 moles of MgOH2 was used. Now, how many moles of MgOH2 were we given in the beginning? 2.4 and 0 0.75 moles have been reacted. So the amount of MgOH2 that is left over, or the excess, would be equal to 2.4 minus 0 0.75, and that will be 1.65 moles. Now, that 1.65 moles of MgOH2 is now going to be used for the second part of this question. So it's a very long type of question. So I'm going to erase everything that we've got so far because I assume that you guys are writing as we go. And if not, you can always pause and rewind. I'll gladly explain everything again. Haha, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> okay, so let me quickly erase everything. So now we are in the second part of the question. So I hope you understand that the acid and the base they had a little bit of a fight because we made them react and we know that acids and bases fight each other and they destroy each other. But there was so much MgOH2, so now there will be 1.65 moles of MgOH2 remaining. There is no more acid, it is, completely, it is completely destroyed. So right now your container would look like this. It would be a total volume of 6 plus 3, you've got to be careful with that. Some students think that because there's no more HCl, they think that all of the volume of the HCl has disappeared. That is not true at all. The volume of HCl, or the, the 3, actually doesn't go anywhere. Now, how can that be? Maybe that's bothered you before. It's because most of this over here is actually water anyways. Did you know that most of chemistry is actually just water? So when we say that this is a HCl, it's a solution of HCl. So even though all of the HCl chemicals have been reacted, most of it is water anyway, and we actually assume that it was all water. So there's still three decimeters of liquid in the container, plus the six decimeters over here, and so there's still going to be a total of nine decimeters. And but it's not going to be any HCl, it's all just MgOH2 floating around in a whole lot of water. Most of chemistry is water. Now you know what a MgOH2 will do in water, it will dissociate because it's a base. So it will break up into Mg, now the valency of Mg is plus 2, and the valency of OH is negative 1. So to balance this you would have to put a 2 over there. Now we know the moles of MgOH2 is 1.65, so that could give us the moles of OH- as 3.3, because it's a 1 to 2 ratio, can you see that? So now we can work out the concentration of OH- as N over V, so it's its number of moles divided by the volume in the container that the MgOH is moving around in. So a lot of students, as I said, they'll use the 6. But remember that the volume of the container is not 6 anymore, it's 9. And so that's the part that you might need to pause and think about for a little bit. Now the answer here is 11 over 30. And I'm going to leave it as 11 over 30 because that's not our final answer. And I don't feel like writing down all the decimals. Now we can use the Kw formula which is H3O positive multiplied by OH negative, and that always equals 10 to the negative 14. So we could say, we don't know what the H3O concentration is, but the OH minus is 11 over 30, and that's equal to 10 to the negative 14. So the H3O concentration would then be equal to, it's a long answer, so I'm not going to write all of it, but it's going to be 2.727272 times by 10 to the negative 14 moles per decimeter. Finally, we can calculate the pH because that's negative log of H3O+. Plus. And so if you had to go work the answer out, you should get 
6 as your final pH. And it makes perfect sense that the pH is above 7 because we had extra base left over and bases have a larger or have a pH larger than 7.